I'm gonna hang up myself in my coat one of these days. Hello and welcome to Pod Hard, everybody. My name is Jonas Högberg. And I'm Anders Schultqvist. It always feels a bit weird to say your Swedish uh, name in English. It doesn't sound made for that language. Uh, you can call me Jonas High Mountain. That's the translation of my surname. Yeah, who the hell am I? Put one more year down for Team Lloyd. Okay, that that's your uh, takeaway from uh, this year, 1923. Yes, we've reached 1923 in our ongoing quest to capture the essence of action movie history. Oh yeah, yeah. I gotta say, I've been a bit lazy with the research this one, so uh, our focus will be mainly Buster Keaton's Our Hospitality and uh, Harold Lloyd's Safety Last. Yes, they will be going head to head in a fierce clash of who is the better comedian. Uh, or something like that. <laughs> wink, wink. Yes, or something like that. Yeah, and you uh, you sort of scrolled through a couple of uh, other movies as well. I scrolled through Three Ages with Buster Keaton, which have, has this uh, wonderful scene where his car breaks down in pieces and a wonderful stunt at the end. And then I scrolled through Why Worry with uh, Harold Lloyd, which I think I will return to because it seemed quite funny. Uh, he seems to play some kind of uh, rich Woody Allen bastard who think he's sick. He, he, gets, he travels to a country and he ends up in, in a revolution and there's chaos and he befriends a giant with toothache. Classic. <laughs> He befriends a giant. Yeah, that's a funny scene uh, when he's being chased by sort of like an entire Mexican army or something. uh, And he's being pummeled by them uh, and uh, the giant helps him out, him unknowing. Uh, So he thinks he knocks out everybody, but uh, actually it's giant. Yeah, but uh, uh, Lloyd is ferocious in this one. He jumps uh, at people and just ground and pound them. I mean, this is some uh, MM, what do you say, Uh, mixed martial arts, ultimate fighting, uh, UFC, uh, ground and pounding stuff, earliest uh, I have seen. (laughs) He just uh, sits on top of them and smack them down. Yeah, I really like his, um, you know, in in Sweden, we we, we call this uh, sort of uh, fisticuffs råsopar, when you really go to town on someone and you put your entire weight into the punches and he goes uh, left punch, right punch, left punch, right punch, like a machine pummeling down on these poor persons. I mean, he's crazy. Did you see when he jumps on top of a guy and sits up on his shoulders and just goes yeah goes to town on his head <laughs> yeah i mean it looks really dangerous i mean he's sort of it looks like almost he he connects and uh, with that force i mean that's really dangerous yeah full impact lloyd yeah he's he's brutal so uh, in hindsight maybe we should have watched uh, why worry for uh, uh, the brawl but we watched Safe the Last since that is uh, Lloyd's most famous movie. And uh, for Buster Keaton, we watched Our Hospitality. And as you said, um, the Three Ages, that was essentially uh, three movies that he made into one feature movie. So he had, he had an idea of um, releasing them apart as uh, two reelers or something like that. But uh, then he thought, well, let's make a feature movie out of it um, and combine them like that. I I thought it was pretty interesting to mix up these, uh, as you said, three two-reelers. Because they seem to, because they are connected in theme. So there is some interesting layering and commenting between the ages as well. It's a fun idea that I think could be developed uh, more. 
And that movie, of course, has the classic Buster Keaton stunt where he leaps from a building, misses the other building and crashes down through uh, baldachines, down into a fire station, down through this uh, fire station um, uh, pole and down onto a fire station car that uh, goes out. Uh, It's a fantastic uh, scene. Well, let's start with our hospitality then. Um... So Buster Keaton is at it again and uh, Three Ages was his first feature movie but uh, it was also kind of thought like two reelers as well. So Our Hospitality is his first attempt at making a movie well with a plot that uh, (laughs) sort of connects through the entire movie. Essentially this is a parody of a famous uh, wild western feud between Hatfields and McCoys. Uh, They were two clans, I suppose you could call them, in the wild west that, uh, well, they were at each other's throat for like 20 years or something. That was a brutal feud that, uh, you know, uh, spanned generations. For real? Yeah, that's that's for real, and it's actually there is actually a very nice uh, Lucky Luke uh, album about that feud as well. So uh, that's a tip for you guys uh, to check it out. And uh, yeah, so essentially this movie is a parody of that feud. Uh, here they're called Canfield and McKay, um, and uh, Buster. Um, we we catch up with him as a baby in the beginning when his uh, dad is out to get one of the other in the clan, in the opposing clan. Um, They have a showdown outside of their cottage. And I thought it was a a really nice setup for the the fight. It's a thunderstorm and there's darkness outside and the action is enlightened by flashes from the uh, thunder. Um, So when uh, they shoot at each other, you see the muscles and then you see a flash of lightning and you see them clutching their chests and uh, falling uh, down. It's a great shootout. It it, it reminded me of that one we found earlier uh, in Massist from 1915, which also was just muscle flares in the dark. And and of course, it's uh, reminiscent of Johnny Toe's. Uh, vengeance uh, decades later <laughs> which is a shootout by uh, by a moon in a moonlit night in the forest where you also just see muscle flares uh, so this was uh, pretty cool there's a scene earlier where where the dad uh, whips out the lights with his hat and the scene flips to uh, this blue tinted uh, night uh, light they use it was a neat uh, visual as well yeah, so uh, Buster grows up. He's a he's a baby in this scene, and twenty years later, he's a young and happening guy with a big hat, living in New York. Buster is looking all dapper in his hat, and he's uh, running around with a bike. And I am uh, correct when I'm saying running around because there is no pedals. He's running with the bike. This was uh, way back. He gets a weird letter that he has uh, his family heritage, this uh, old cottage back home in this uh, tiny village back west. Uh, and he thinks, oh my god, I got a grand castle, oh wow, hoo hoo hoo. Um, and his mother says, oh, you better be careful, there's a feud going on that I haven't told you about. And so he goes west, and he goes west with a fantastic toy train that I've not seen the like of. What? Did they actually use these kinds of trains? Uh, I don't know. It, uh, the The engine looks like a, one of those early trains. Uh, there's, a, there's an engine, uh, you could say, uh, pulling uh, a bun- basically a bunch of stagecoaches tied together. It, and they go on rails, but the rails are just... Uh, laid out on the ground so they can move them around donkeys and stuff. I mean, it's it's a really cute scene, but it goes on like uh, forever. <laughs> but <laughs> it's this uh, long and winding, bumpy proto-train uh, and these cute top hats that everyone has. He, he has such a large hat 
that when uh, the cart is bouncing all the time, so he bounces up into the roof, and finally he just gets rid of his uh, big hat and pulls out his normal flat hat and uh, puts it on his head. So that was cute, I thought. There's also a fantastic scene where, like, an old man (laughs) sees the train and becomes all enraged and starts throwing pebbles at the train. Uh, And the engineer that runs the train throws um, um, wood uh, planks back at him, and they're, like, having a showdown or something. Very funny. Yeah, was it because he wanted to collect uh, wood, this, this geezer? (laughs) <laughs> I, I hope so in that case he's a very clever fellow anyway Buster's World this kind of a naive uh, pure fantasy world kind of but then it, it gets invaded by uh, domestic violence and uh, sometimes blackface and other uh, elements that are not uh, as uh, cute uh, um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, uh, so Buster arrives at his destination. And uh, during the travel, he's become sweet with a girl, unknowing that she's part of the other clan that uh, he is supposed to be feuding with. Uh, he doesn't care about this feud since he hasn't heard about it until recently. He tells uh, a random fellow that he runs past, uh, Can you direct me to the McKay estate? And this person is an, a Canfield, uh, him unknowing that, of course. So he says, oh, yes, of course. And then they go past a couple of houses and uh, the Canfield guy goes into the houses and asks for a gun. Uh, oh, not in this one. Okay. In this one? No, not in this one. And when he finds a gun, Buster has uh, run off uh, doing some other stuff. Uh, before that, do you know that old geezer that is sleeping on the last, on top of the last wagon all the way, uh, who sits uh, all laid back at an angle, uh, sleeping in his top hat? There was a wonderful scene when they arrive when a guy, I don't exactly know why, uh, kicks his hat off with a high kick. It was a swift move. <laughs> Absolutely, that was fantastic. I mean, what a kick. That was uh, worth the admission almost. That was the locomotive driver, right? That is Buster Keaton's father, Joe Keaton. It's like when Van Damme kicks cigarettes out of people's mouths. But uh, this guy is kicking top hats of old geezers. (laughs) Yeah. This uh, girl that Buster has been talking with uh, invites him to her home. Meanwhile, this uh, Canfield guy uh, that he uh, had this walk with has alerted his uh, brother and father that there's a McKay around and uh, they become like uh, crazy. They put out their guns and they go around (laughs) searching for him. Um, And uh, as Buster has been invited to their home, they need to show their hospitality to him. As long as Buster is in their home, they can't do anything to him. They have to show him hospitality. There's many funny shots of these guys but running off, getting their guns ready. Or every time Buster does a move, <laughs> yeah. they, they reach for the guns really quick. Uh, we're going to shoot this guy up. <laughs> <laughs> they, they get a lot of good, uh, good shots out of this. I, I, I really like when they sit down for dinner and the butler comes in and drops... Uh, his, um, well, the dinner on the floor, and Buster shoots out of his uh, his uh, chair, and the other two guys, um, the brothers, uh, the Canfield brothers, shoot out of their chairs, and everybody stands uh, still and looking at each other. Very good. And the, and the, there's a big explosion when he uh, when he arrives at the cottage, and his dreams are crushed. When it is not a big mansion, he he fantasizes that uh, this big house explodes. It's a model, of course, but a huge explosion. So we at least get two explosions in this movie. A house being blown up and a dam being blown up. For everybody uh, counting explosions, that's two for our hospitality. And the domestic violence scenes I was talking about is during the chase... uh, Buster happens up on a, a wife beater and tries to uh, interrupt, but then Buster is beaten up uh, by the wife for meddling. Yeah, it's f- really fresh stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
uh, well, finally Buster gets wise to uh, where he is. He has a, he's at the Canfield resident. Oh my god! And he overhears them talking that they can't uh, shoot him while he's uh, still at their house. So he tries to become a, a, a regular guest. He doesn't want to leave there. Uh, but uh, finally he does leave and there's a big chase. We get to see Buster in a big dress, uh, sporting an umbrella as sort of a weapon. That's a very nice look for him. He dresses up a horse's ass <laughs> uh, as as a old lady in this dress and uh, gets the Canfields to point their guns at the horse and then the horse... Uh, shows uh, himself. Oh, it was a horse. It was a horse's ass. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, there's a big... Uh, they run around in the forest. Uh, Buster climbs a mountain! And there's a, uh, there's a canfield that throws down a rope to, Bus- to Buster. And he ties up himself and uh, dangles over a ravine. Uh, whereby the other guy has tied the rope to him and is about to shoot him. Uh, he's being pulled down and both Buster and the Canfield plummets to the to the um, ground. Uh, oh no, to the um, water. There's a big uh, lake down there. So and then they're fighting each other with the rope. They're tugging at the rope and uh, knocking each other down in the water. Later on, uh, the big centerpiece, I guess, is uh, these stunts in the wild stream and at the waterfall. Buster and the girl has fallen into the rapids. Buster apparently risked his life pretty wild here. Uh, He actually got knocked down and the movie crew had to search for him uh, for 10 minutes before they found him face down into the water. So he was uh, close to dying in this uh, stunt, actually. You understand it's uh, dangerous uh, in reality, but it is not the most exciting uh, visual. It ends with him uh, at a waterfall uh, saving Natalie Talmadge with a nice um, rope stunt. He swings with the rope and catches her like a, like a real action hero. I suppose I might not be the audience. I'm not a fan of the, these uh, man against nature action heroes. Uh, at all. I'm more of an urban guy. Uh, Give me some skyscrapers and I'm good to go. Then you'll be happy to know that we will be going into the town now and talking about Safety Last, Harold Lloyd's big movie. Well, this is the movie everybody talks about when they talk about Harold Lloyd, Safety Last. And I hadn't seen it in in full, so so this was one that has been uh, roaming around my lists for ages. Yeah, I haven't seen it either, Um, and uh, it was a very well-made movie, I think. Uh, Maybe it wasn't that action-packed, but um, there were some really good comedic uh, moments. Um, I think Lloyd has a very, very nice um, feel for the comedic language. I think I would uh, sort of liken him to uh, Jerry Lewis. He's sort of a precursor to Jerry Lewis in my mind. He is this affable, always happy guy that is always trying to do good but uh, ends up in all sort of trouble. Uh, Do you find him likable? Oh, uh, well, he's a bit uh, weird sometimes. I can give you that. (laughs) I don't know. I I find him a bit unlikable. And also, while I agree for the most part, I think he sometimes oversells or is a bit obvious with his jokes. He just delivers them. I mean, sometimes it feels like Buster and uh, Chaplin maybe always push themselves to develop their comedy while Lloyd kind of settles in sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I I think uh, Buster, at least Buster, has... uh, much uh, has a much higher level in him that he shows not as often but uh, Harold is like he's always pretty good I think <laughs> yeah, may- yeah maybe more uh, leveled I mean uh, he he has a standard that he maybe doesn't push above but he always delivers uh, reasonable results <laughs> absolutely and I think Buster he tries more to be inventive and uh, pushing the boundaries of comedy. But Harold Lloyd is the action star. These, uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I think it's uh, 
I think it's really nice that um, even when there's like talking scenes, he has a mo- nice moving camera. I thought about that in the opening shot of the movie, I think it is, when he's just uh, like talking with people and the camera is uh, moving towards them and uh, being, you know, mobile. Uh, I think that is very, very... Um, you don't see that a lot in uh, these silent movies that... Uh, they're experimenting with moving camera, even in talking scenes. He often has that in the chase scenes as well, this uh, camera rigged on a car. So it, it moves pretty fast, the camera, and also shakes a bit, so it's almost like handheld. <laughs> Feels very uh, modern and... Uh, yeah, and this, and he, he also does these uh, visual gags. Uh, the scene you are talking about, the, the opening where we pull out, and I mean, it's framed like he's in jail uh, at first, and then we pull out and see more, and he's just at a train station. It does this as well later when 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 the intertext says he's in danger, and he looks frightened, and the camera pulls out and reveals uh, something else. We'll get to that. Yeah, so we we were led to believe that he's in jail behind bars, and we see um, a gallow in the in the background, uh, and that is uh, not a gallows. That is not a hanging snare. Uh, that is uh, part of a train station decor or something like that. So he's actually at the train station. So pretty smart visual gags. Yeah, yeah, very good. He's actually at the train station, Um, he's going to the big city, he's saying goodbye to his uh, beloved and uh, her mother and he promised that he will make good in the big city, become a big important character so that they can get married and have lots of money and she's like, you'll be fantastic, I just know it, I won't accept failure or something like that. so he's very pressured from the get-go. Did you notice, uh, or did you mind, did you, uh, or did you find, <laughs> did you find this movie a bit text-heavy? It does uh, rely more on intertexts uh, for dialogue and and stuff. Uh, I don't know what I think about it. I I just noticed. Yeah, maybe a bit more intertitles than usual. Um, but. You need to remember that uh, both Lloyd and Keaton tried to limit intertitles as much as they could and just rely on the um, movie telling itself, sort of. Because this one has some quite funny texts as well. They they seem to have worked more with the jokes in the intertitles. Yeah, and I really like that they um, sort of give the intertitles... Uh, they, they have, like, cartoons drawn over them as well. Buildings shown and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, they do stuff with the intertitles. Oh, and there's a very nice joke at the end of the movie. Uh, we'll get back to that uh, with the intertitles. Uh, But here in the beginning, there's a mix-up. Lloyd tries to get his suitcase, but a woman has put down her baby. And he runs off with the the baby instead. And the woman runs after him. No, no, no. That's my baby. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, There's your baby and there's my suitcase. Now I'll go on board the train. And he goes on a truck instead. Oh, my God, I'm on a truck. I need to run off to the train. And then he runs his uh, characteristic Harold Lloyd run, where where it looks like this guy... (laughs) He's like Usain Bolt or something. He runs like mad. I love it. I love his run. He grabs that truck behind his back. So he just gets swept away, buddy. And it's great timing of these elements, all the moving parts. I guess pure Lloyd. And I think it was uh, maybe a bit uh, uncharacteristic for silent movies to be this uh, woman with the baby. Uh, She's black. And they don't actually make a point of it that she's black. And they don't uh, so oh, she's dumb or something. And oh, th- there's the black stupid person with the baby or something like that. She's just a character with a baby that is being implemented into a, um, a set piece. Which I thought was really nice. So a bit uncharacteristic, I think, for silent movies. So anyway, Lloyd gets to the big city. He has a a best friend that he is um, hanging out with. And they're doing a rerun of a classic uh, Lloyd gag where they hang themselves up on um, coat hangers. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, I, I noticed a, uh, a bunch of uh, reworked bits from his own er- earlier stuff. But but that was pretty common as well, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, uh, Roscoe Arbuckle, for one, uh, he, he always found a way to reuse uh, a bit. <laughs> he liked the pie in the face. Sure did. Yeah, so uh, that's of, of course, I mean, uh, Buster of course um, does um, reruns of his jokes as well, but I think he tries to elevate them sometimes. Uh, he tries to to do something more with the jokes, not just do them again as I've seen Lloyd do a couple of times. So Mm, but uh, it's a great joke, and they look funny as hell when they're being hanged up <laughs> in their big coats on the coat hangers. You want to do it yourself? <laughs> it's one of. <laughs> I'm not complaining. I love it, but uh, you know. Mm. I'm gonna hang up myself in my coat one of these days. I mean, that coat hanger has to be made of uh, titanium or something. How is it? <laughs> how is it uh, keeping them up there? Anyway, he's working in a. Um, uh, apartment store where they're selling fabrics, I guess. So there's a lot of ho- housewives going through there. But this particular day, when uh, when he is getting to work, he gets locked in the back of a van and ends up in the on the other side of town, more or less. Uh, and there's a big set piece where he tries to get back to his job. Very nice set piece. Very nice set piece. Uh, finally, he he convinces uh, an ambulance. Uh, their ambulance drivers that he has been injured and that they need to take him to the hospital. And when he gets to his street, he he stands up in in the the cart and says, oh, can you drop me off here? Yeah, and this ambulance has this pretty wild, cool, front-mounted point-of-view shots when he looks out the window from the car that speeds through traffic and... uh, cruises between trucks and and stuff. Yeah, great action. And I mean, I love these scenes of New York. I'm guessing it's New York uh, that they've shot the movie in. Uh, You really get the feeling for how busy and chaotic the town was uh, back in the day. Of course, it it's it is uh, today as well. But I mean, here the the streets are packed with people, and the um, car lanes are packed with people, and carts and uh, horses. And I mean, it's chaos. I mean, I, I think we said that in an earlier episode when we were on Lloyd, he's the foremost uh, interpreter of the urban <laughs> cityscape. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Especially when it gets up high. I mean, uh, these, uh, which we will get to, uh, these shots when up high, down on the streets, they, they are uh, fascinating. They're spectacular. So there's some whims and hijinks at work, after work. And uh, so on. Uh, the, this movie more than... Uh, I mean, it's just uh, these little uh, vignettes of sorts. Uh, it, but it moves uh, along at a pretty good pace, I think. Yeah, I mean, a very good pace. I think uh, that's one of his uh, key strengths, actually. He knows when a joke is done. He, he moves on quickly. So that is very good. There's a fantastic scene where there's like tug of war in the shop. There's a gang of crazy housewives. Uh, they're like, <laughs> the, everybody is crazy. They're, they're trying to get fabrics uh, uh, from left to right. And Lloyd is being, uh, he's being pummeled around. And they strip him of his jacket. Uh, and he, <laughs> he, he tries to make sense of this uh, utter chaos that rules in the store. There's some great bits in there when two ladies tear at cloths and uh, one uh, falls to the ground. Uh, Lloyd counts eight, nine, ten, out, <laughs> and uh, raises the other lady's uh, arm like a winner. Yeah, and there, there's a lady that uh, pierces him with an umbrella. He in, in, entails in a fight with her. He picks up something, and they, they're having a fencing duel. Pretty good one as well. Yeah, great, great stuff. And there's a cat being uh, thrown around, and... Uh, it seems like everything is happening at the same time. Very, very good scene. And so the girl arrives to town because Lloyd has been sending her uh, expensive gifts. He has uh, not eaten, I guess, uh, at all. He spends all his money on gifts for his girl. He boasts that he has been given a, a great um, job there at the store, that he's like the manager of the store or something. And so she thinks... 
oh, it's it's clear for me to come to the city and so we can get married. He's to, he's a wealthy man now. Uh, and so he has to fool her that he is in. Uh, he runs the store where he act- actually is just a clerk. So there's a lot of uh, things where he has to convince the other staff, uh, the other clerks, to uh, uh, he can boast before them and show them this is how you, this is how you do it. Uh, oh yes, come on, come on. Uh, and she is uh, she's dawdling over him. She thinks he's the best thing since since sliced bread or something. I mean, this girl is in love. Wow. And then finally, uh, he overhears the general manager who says, I, uh, I gotta get more customers in. A uh, thousand bucks to the guy who <laughs> who comes up with anything. I mean, the whole setup is a bit far-fetched. I mean, the script was like, okay, we have some stuff here, we have some stuff here. And how does he get onto the building, climbing the building? Oh, yeah, let's let's have a competition or something. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. So he rushes in and, and says, like, oh, I have a great idea. Yeah, yeah, because in an earlier scene, we have seen his buddy uh, climbing a building, uh, escaping a police. So he knows that his buddy is great at climbing buildings and so he says oh yeah can you climb uh, this building where the uh, general store is it's like 12 stories high it's almost a skyscraper uh, size building and he says oh yeah yeah definitely but this cop uh, (laughs) who chased his friend earlier shows up at uh, the spot where he's supposed to climb and uh, Harold Lloyd has to take over He's only supposed to get to second floor and his pal will take over. But the cop is after him, so they have to... uh, Oh, just one more floor. Just one more floor. It's always pushed up a notch. So Lloyd has to climb on. Uh, And, uh, you know, all sort of things happen. One floor leads to another. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, On the third floor, there's like somebody uh, throws down bird seeds at him. So he gets uh, a lot of doves on him that is trying to get to the seeds, uh, (laughs) which is extremely dangerous, of course. He's trying to fend them off as he is holding on to the building. On another floor, he's being a net is being thrown down on him. I think it's a tennis net that someone drops uh, and he has to tangle himself out of the net. Yeah, it's wonderful. They just throw in different stuff for every floor. (laughs) And meanwhile, in parallel, his friend tries to get away from this cop. Uh, uh, So so they just push forth this almost absurd uh, absurdity through addition just by uh, add different uh, obstructions for every floor. I, I think it's a beautifully constructed uh, multi-layered uh, sequence. Uh, on one floor, there's a photography shoot uh, where a guy pointing a gun being fo- photographed and Lloyd opening the window sees this guy pointing the gun at him. The flash goes off and he thinks he's been shot and ah, pummels out and almost falls to the ground. So there's a lot of these things. And finally, he reaches this uh, penultimate uh, shot with the clock. And this, uh, this is, of course, the iconic uh, picture from this um, movie and uh, from Lloyd's entire career, I would say. If you've ever heard of Harold Lloyd, you know he's the guy that hangs from a clock high above ground. It's a nice uh, set piece. And so he holds on to the uh, the clock pointer and uh, the clock like bursts out from the building. And so he hangs um, out from the building, still clutching on to the clock. Then he essentially swings himself back to the building and uh, continues to climb. But then he gets stuck in the interior of the clock. Finally, he reaches the roof. And uh, when Lloyd and his girl are on the roof and everything is well, uh, you get this great intertitle joke. As you see his buddy and the cop, they're chasing down rooftops uh, way in the distance. The buddy screams something to his buddy and you see the intertitle being very, very, very small. The font size is very, very small. And you can just make out what is re- that is uh, sort of like uh, yelling to his buddy, hey, way to go, something like that. So very, very nice uh, way to work with your intertitles in this movie. Yeah, it was brilliant. I think he says something like, uh, which he has repeated for every level, 
I'll just shake this cup and and I'll get back <laughs> or something like that. That wide image of all the roof uh, of all the roofs and them running was spectacular. So yeah, this was of course a dangerous movie as well to record. I mean, the climbing was done for the most part by Lloyd, but uh, some shots where you actually see someone from afar climbing the building and it's it's very clear that there's a person climbing a building and there's not a safety net below. Uh, that's a stunt double, actually. Lloyd did, of course, a lot of climbing himself. And you see him, he's actually very strong. I mean, he, he, he pulls himself up on these uh, weird ledges. And uh, I mean, he, it's very impressive stuff. And when he hangs from the clock, it's very, very impressive as well. Uh, that shot, of course, was filmed with the wall was very close to the ground and they had like a mattress below so he wasn't at peril really there but um, nonetheless a very impressive movie yeah i really like when you see lloyd climbing uh, the house and you see the ground below as well and uh, the cars went going past and something and you really get the sense of being in the now that this is actually happening now and you get the sense of being there very nice that's 1923 for you i guess not much else happened this year that we've heard about <laughs> well, I, I gotta say, I, I've been, uh, I have not been doing my homework, you could say. Well, of course, uh, but I don't think there was much more in 1923, actually, so I think we're good. <laughs> we're covered. <laughs> Yeah, we're covered. Or else uh, people just gonna have to jump us and, and we will uh, we'll return to 1923. Hey, we look forward to that. Yeah, I wanna get jumped. Yeah, jump us. Do it. So next year... Ground and pound us like Lloyd. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, give us those haymakers. Um, yes. So Not for real, year, nine... though. So next year... So next year, <laughs> 19... so next year, 1924. Um, yeah, looking forward to more uh, haphazardous craziness from our comedy stars and we'll see a return from our swashbuckling hero as well. <laughs>